Thermoelectrics is a uh, interesting um, area uh, that studies materials that can convert solid state materials that can convert heat directly into electricity. And there are many applications that can use such technology. For example, wearable devices. We can power our consumer electronics just by using our body's heat. We can also, for example, power medical devices in remote areas. Another key application is waste is, is recovery of waste heat. More than two thirds of power involved in uh, power production is wasted through heat. So by using thermoelectric materials, we can, in principle, harness some of that heat and put it back into the system as a form of electricity. So the net effect would be increasing the overall energy efficiency. And but a really another really interesting application is for space application. For example, uh, a few decades ago, NASA sent to the outer space a probe Voyager 1 and then Voyager 2. They just recently approached uh, the interstellar space. Uh, in those probes, um, the heat, uh, the electricity generated by a thermoelectric material, where the heat source is given by a nuclear reaction, plutonium-238 specifically. Uh, and that's why that technology is called radioisotope thermoelectric generator. And when I visited JPL a couple years ago, I got really fascinated to, uh, to, to see that what actually you're doing in a, in a computer simulations that generates just a picture like this can really be translated into a real life application. And uh, it's really even more than real life, it's like outer space. I'm very grateful to JPL that is now generously uh, funding my research. One of the main uh, applications of wearable devices based on thermoelectric materials is in remote areas where sometimes the infrastructure is not really developed. So we really need to uh, bypass the need for power and then we can use ourselves as a power generator. And then so the patient, for example, in a remote hospital can use his body's heat to power, for example, a device that measure the brain activity. And I think that this is a very interesting area that perhaps they, um, deserve more attention. My specific area in thermoelectrics is nanostructure thermoelectrics. Uh, in fact, to have a, an efficient thermoelectric material, we must have a material that has a high electrical conductivity and low thermal conductivity. And it's very hard. Nature was not very generous in providing us with such a material. So we had to hack it and create a nanostructure that um, it happens can decouple the electrical and the thermal conductivity of a material. To model such a, uh, a material, though, is very complicated because what had been known for two centuries, Fourier's law is very good in modeling heat transport, but only at the macro scale. As soon as we shrink to the nano scale, as soon as we are dealing with a material whose characteristic length is about, let's say, 100 nanometer, then diffusive the law is challenged. And we need to use another uh, physical description. And this is due to the quantum mechanical behavior of matter at the nano scale. In this case, it's given by phonons that are quantized lattice vibration. And so over the past, I would say the past decade, uh, I've been deeply invested in developing this code called OpenBT. BT stands for Boltzmann Transport Equation. That is really a tool that can capture non-diffusive behavior of heat transport. And, and eventually, as it has been um, um, implemented in a efficient way can also be used for inverse design. And so, uh, so we can really come up with the best configuration uh, given, for example, the requirement of low thermal conductivity and high mechanical stability.